and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube watching this video later on for a, another donation deck that we're starting today off with. Um, a deck that we're calling Johnny's Pride because we are building a deck around uh, Lifelink and specifically around a Johnny Strength of the Pride. New Mythic in Core Set 2020. Four mana, five loyalty, Planeswalker. That minus two ability uh, just makes a Johnny's Pride Mates. So that's pretty sweet. So um, we get to just have, you know, eight Pride Mate basically in this deck. So we'll have our regular Pride Mates. I guess we're going to have really, we're going to have 12 Pride Mates because this a Johnny will make more Pride Mates. So that's like eight. And then we also have the Bloodthirsty Aerialists, which also, whenever you gain life, you put a counter on these. So this is also basically a Johnny's Pride Mate. So we got 12 Pride Mate dot deck and that's what our that's what our deck's built around we have healer socks in here because they have lifelink the vanguard can gain some life also gets that life gain trigger if we have three creatures soul mender doesn't look to be a very good card but since our deck is really focused on uh these creatures that get counters whenever you gain life i guess we're gonna go ahead and, and try them out so we got a couple soul menders in here legion's landing makes some more lifelink creatures um Othakaya gains life, Soren's Tick Up gains life, plus gives all of our creatures lifelink. Um, Contempt gains life. Black Blade can give a creature lifelink, so we can give like a Pride Mate lifelink, for example. And of course, if we're gaining five life a turn, then we got Resplendent Angel because this card is awesome. So, um, yeah, this deck's looking pretty sweet. Oh, you think this deck would benefit immensely from Midnight Reaper? I kind of agree with you, honestly. Yeah, I I do think the Midnight Reaper would be really good in here. That's a good call. Hmm. I probably shouldn't change it, though, because this is a donation deck. Hey, what's up, QQ Image? So I probably shouldn't change that. Um, but that, that does seem like that would be a really good addition. One thing I'm going to change, though, is I didn't do this beforehand. I usually do this beforehand. But I didn't change our basics. Our basics are not too great. I've been liking this planes here with this like little pink purpley background. And I've been liking this swamp. All right, let's get some new basics. Um, yeah, even even sideboard. Midnight Reaper would be a great sideboard card for this kind of deck against removal heavy decks um, also. So that's, that's a good card to think about um, for the deck afterwards. Um, to change basics, yeah, I get this question all the time. You just go... Click that advanced filters right there and click the basic lands, and then you can change your basics. That's how you do it. All right, well, anyway, let's get to the games. We'll go ahead and play a traditional constructed league here. See if we get to five wins or two losses, see which one happens first. Oh, dang it. Sorry, Julius. Uh, I already joined. Oh well. Um, just saw you just just joined in and said go ahead and try some midnight reapers in the sideboard. That's all right. We do have we have two. Yeah, the the one mana gain gain a life guy is really underpowered. The soul mender that is it is a very underpowered card. But to be fair, like we were talking about, we have twelve cards that, um, you know that uh. The Soul Mender can power up. <laughs> yeah, Midnight Reaper would be looking a lot better here. Midnight Reaper into Soren. Um, all right, how are we doing on lands over overall? Only twenty three. I mean, if I keep this and we don't draw, if we just draw lands, we are obviously dead. Let's ship. We got London Mulligan roll. Good mulligan. The Vanguard? Is it the Vanguard or the Aerialist? We'll get rid of the Aerialist. We don't need two cards that cost a BB. With this only having one B in our hand. 
This thing's just not really doing very much for us right now. It's just a one mana one one. This isn't a fight you can win. All right, our opponent's cards are looking a little bit better than ours so far. Game's not over though yet. Yeah, of course, Dusty. Yeah, I'll be. Yeah, I'll be playing historic. Absolutely. Like All right, come on, draw some black mana. Like waxes. Definitely want to contempt this cameo. I've got time. To the library. Yay. I have learned a little here. I suppose that's how it was meant to happen. All right. Not bad. First threat was vanquished. I will protect the virtue of this world. The land fights for us. Second threat. Contempted. Forgive me. Hmm. If I didn't block, I mean, I think it's good to get the land world out of there, but, you know, obviously they just have millions of mana. But if I didn't block, then next turn I would be, be able to gain a life from the Vanguard, attack with the Vampire to gain a life, so that's two, play the Oath of Kaya, that's another three, I'd be able to trigger the Resplendent Angel. Yeah, hopefully they don't find any, any big payoff. Um... You know, we already got rid of two of their best cards. Wait, so it's black, red, green, white. So Johnny gains three life for the tick up. I can play Soren, tick up Soren, attack with both of these, gain and gain five life there, and, and trigger a Splendid Angel. I think that's what we're gonna do. Soren still has six loyalty. We have we have the one blocker of the four four. I will finish it. <laughs> what a mess I've made. Yeah, so we got of one blocker. Ooh. I protect those who cannot protect themselves. It's a 
cool looking pride mate. Uh, we still we still wouldn't be able to ult a Johnny to have 15 more life than what we started with. That was a that was a jacked looking cat though. All right, so Noxious grasps, absolutely. Uh, Disparks, absolutely. So grasp and Dispark get rid of uh, Tamio and Nissa. Big things there. Um, mass manipulation's gonna kind of wreck us. I think that's just how life is. Alright, so am I just cutting, like, a bunch of, like, these smaller creatures here? Like, Legion's Landing, Soul Mender, Lead in Vanguard? I think so. Just doesn't really seem like these things are ever going to get through, right? We just don't play those little things. And then we got three more... We got three more spots for Duresses. Um, Elder Spell or Soren. Maybe... Uh, I mean, Cast Down's not so bad either. Uh, we already got Noxious Grasps. We got to be able to kill Big Krasis. That's what I'm worried about, Big Krasis. No, Gideon's pretty good here. Oh, but you're saying, like, if our opponent gets Gideon from Mass Manipulation? Yeah, that'll be... Yeah, that's... I mean, I don't, I don't really want to cut a card just based on that. But, I mean, we have... I don't know. We have Contempt. We can attack. Gideon pretty good. I'm not sure if I need all three to Sparks. Got on two to spark, get another dress in here. We're basically gonna need to win it in the air. That's our hope. Birdie. We all know the birds and cats go well together. Why does the cat always change back to red? Birds and cats. Hmm. Oath of Kaya kill Incubation Druid is really not bad. But then the Duress probably won't do very much. No, it's Krasis. That's the worst possible card to see. Hey, Intellibeam. Thanks so much for that Twitch Prime sub. And that Prime sub is the 13th month. Man, Prime numbers are pretty great. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, certainly regret what we did last turn, you know. Definitely wish we would have just Othakai last turn on the Incubation Druid. Last turn. Alright, let's see. C so plus you took up to six.
I guess I'm not supposed to trade. You know, they're, they're probably just going to end up trading. Okay, at least they don't don't have anything else right now. Kind of in top deck mode. I was hoping to draw the land and be able to go resplendent plus disbark. I cannot protect you anymore. Hey, Delotrius. If fighting tooth and claw is what it takes, then so be it. Find your inner strength. We draw land next turn, we can double our Splendid Angel. I could certainly see them just attacking out with a lot of things and killing a Johnny, though. I hope not. You know, I don't want my Johnny to die, but we do trigger the Othakaya. You know, Othakaya trigger will gain us some life also. I hope you find peace. Friendship soon. Hey, Lexus Bros. Yeah, like these are they're they're called traditional constructed queue, like they're tr the traditional constructed events here on Arena, and they work where you just play until you either win five matches or you lose two, whichever comes first. So, yep, and you it costs a thousand gold to enter, and then you get rewards based on how many wins you get throughout so that was our first win a johnny's pride coming through clutch our opponent did not top deck mass manipulation ever and we win so yeah yep they have the thousand gold entry fee All right, we got three triple one drops. It's always good. We got the one drop, double one drop opener. Let's start with the hawk. Hmm. Yeah, the card's called a Johnny Strength of the Pride. It looks like MTG Bot doesn't have it up yet.
We draw a black land next turn. We can play this bloodthirsty aerial list. Dang, no land. I think so. Attacking would sacrifice the van. Like, yeah, like they get to activate incubation druid here. So attacking just kills one of my vanguards, but it's it's honestly it's got to be worth it to flip the landing, right? Well, now the opponent has infinite mana. Nothing to do? Nothing to do? I mean, is it just for old mystics over there or something? And if so, would I rather have Gideon or Resplendent Angel countered? I guess Gideon. Of course, scared of another Frilled Mystic, so I was just going to activate the first fort. Counselor's Insight's just an awesome card, though, because they have so much mana. Witness the ties that bind us all. Too much mana. <laughs> yeah, that deck was pretty sweet. The yeah, we were playing Bant Ramp yesterday. We we're doing crazy stuff, kind of like my opponent's doing over here. Well, this bloodthirsty aerial list is quite, quite big, and only getting bigger. Nah. This time our opponent did have the mass manipulation. Fortunately, we can't really duress away frilled mystics. It's unfortunate.
All right, gonna do kind of the same thing we did last time. Except for I want these cast downs. Last time I didn't bring in the cast downs, but I think I want those. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a three duress. Maybe it is just the Gideons out. I feel like the Gideons pressure our opponent really well, though. We'll play the one Gideon though. Yeah, this would be this would be a really good matchup for Legion's end for sure. Any Krasis matchup, Legion's end is pretty good. Hmm. I'm gonna let them draw this card first before I duress. Because maybe like their card that we really want to take is was that top card of their library, you know, unclear. So, all right. So I mean, we have to take mass manipulation, but man, chemistry's insight. Ugh. Yeah, we gotta take that. All right, please black mana, please black mana, please black mana. I mean, I guess I should maybe just be playing the Ozakaya on the land world here anyway. I guess yeah, I should just be doing that. Yeah, I should just be doing that. All right, now just any mana. No. Ugh, that's really, really unfortunate. Getting that Johnny in, in right here would have been nice. No land still. I, honestly, I don't know why my opponent played that Krasis there. I feel like just holding up Chemisters inside and Frilled Mystic is a lot better idea than playing that, that Krasis, but I was glad they did. Oh, come on. Well, this is really, really unfortunate. Can't play our cards. Through this land, we are all connected. I can help you no longer. It's too bad. That is not good luck. <laughs> no, that is not. It won't let me play, but it'll let me resign. All right, we have to go back to the menu. Come on back. There we go. We only have one more white source than black sources. We have seven plain six swamps as far as basics go. Um, but yeah, there's there's only just that one double black card, Bloodthirsty Arrow list, besides the Vrasis Contempt. And we just kept on drawing more copies of it, and no lands. Quite unfortunate. All right, this is better. So we'll start, you know, we'll go bird into cat, which is a great start, and hope to draw another white source by turn three so that we can go double vanguard, go double cat. Uh, yeah, Evo. Uh, made a deck already with that. Um, you know, check check it out on the YouTube channel. Look for Saf Safara Spirits from two days ago. Um, yeah, I I mean I love I love the temples myself. Again, this is not a deck I put together, Jay Gomez. Yeah, I mean I love the temples. We we do have like an aggressive curve here. 
And we have a couple of scoured... We have two scoured barons for like a ninth and a tenth duel also. So we have... There are ten dual lands in the deck. Um... And I guess we're playing Scoured Barons because that the gain life. This is kind of the problem with playing twenty three lands, though. We get a lot of a lot of hands where we don't have enough lands. It happens, but. That's tough. Yeah, let's go this way. Really don't want my pride mate to get killed, so they go like Steamkin. Okay, now we draw a white source. No. Really need to draw a white source there. Yeah, White Source would have been so awesome because we would have been able to go Pride Mate plus Vanguard, double trigger, gain two life. Ooh, our Pride Mate didn't die. We're still in there. Pride Mate not dying. Man, we've had some pretty bad mana luck today. <laughs> Last game we needed the two swamps. Like, we're playing all the duels, right? Yeah, we have four Godless Shrine, four Isolated Chapel, two Scoured Barons. So I can either have two three threes or one four four. It's probably better to have the four four. With the red deck having a lot of three damage spells. Yeah, brought back is a new code here for Arena. Yep, get 2,000 experience. Boo. All right, we got a dual land. Be lucky. I'm honestly surprised they didn't kill one of the lean in vanguards. Should all strive for a peaceful resolution. True friends always stand by your side. I thought for sure that that's what the other Firebrand was going to do, is kill one of these lean-in vanguards. And no, it doesn't make sense to sit back and try to block with a vanguard, because there are two twos attacking. Cool, Ancestral Knowledge. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm hyped for that deck. I like all the decks that we're playing today. I like this deck, too. Like I, I like all the decks we're playing today. These are, these are some good, fun ones today. So repeating barrage costs five mana to return it back from their graveyard to their hand. So, you know, they'd have to spend eight mana to be able to recast it again. Uh, they got six right now. 
So they only have like the one card over here, whatever that is. Presumably not a land, because they haven't hit all their land drops. Yeah, I should probably have another duel or two in the Gruel, Gruel mana base. We have Paradise Druids, though, to help out, and Domri. Like, Domri, Paradise Druid, those help out with, like, the, the double red, triple green. That's a good, that's a good card. Um, so I guess I'm playing Resplendent Angel, so I can get two angels. One, one, two, three. If I play Resplendent Angel, I have to tick up a Johnny. If I want to minus on a Johnny, I kind of want to minus on a Johnny. Yeah, actually, let's do that. We'll do that instead of play. So then we'll play Gideon instead. Pride grows stronger. I will defend the weak at every opportunity. I will lend you my strength. And of course, giving this seven, giving this creature life link, making a seven-seven life linker. <laughs> that wasn't that wasn't greedy, what? Like was that was that more greet was that greedier of a line of playing Resplendent Angel and ticking up a Johnny to gain uh gain five life? I don't know, we gained more life this way. Okay, you take it back. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I know Rex, I know you didn't say that like a couple of people did. Uh let's see. Red deck. I didn't think we were winning that one, to be honest. All right, against the red deck, let's get these cast downs in here. An extra Soren, and our opponent just never killed the Lean and Vanguards, even though they had like the Firebrands and stuff. They just never killed these, and it was awesome. Gideon is probably I don't know, maybe too slow. Hmm. So all these like one ones are all pretty bad against Chain Whirler, but it kind of seems like our opponent may be on a little bit of a budget deck there. They had the Gutter Snippers, so they may not have Chain Whirler. Hmm. I'm going to cut a couple of the three drops, a Resplendent Angel and a Gideon, to go with a Legion's Landing. I'm going to try keeping in all of, like, I mean, well, I did cut one landing, but basically all of these one mana things that can help us gain little increment life. As we saw in that game, the increment life with you know, paired with the pride mates was very valuable. I don't like Firebrand. Ooh. 
I was about to say the opponent learned their lesson, but no, opponent did not learn their lesson. Dang. You know, when they when they do that on turn one right there, you want like double spell, especially double expensive spell. That's what you want to see. You do not want to see land land. That is that's the perfect light up the stage. Early like that. Yeah, so their whole hand is probably just a bunch of spells. Probably. I'm not going to attack and let them shock me and make their Steamkin a 2-2 two -two and block. It's not worth it. It's not worth trying to get that one point of damage in. They both tick up to six. This Ajani gains us an extra life. Then what the Soren does. Those who cannot protect themselves. I think I want to. Okay, well, that's dead anyway. Friendship is the best cure. So say I think I wanted to have the Vanguard chump block the Steamkin. All right, well at least the Johnny doesn't die here. This deals the damage to the opponent, right? Okay, yes, yeah, so that that is not redirected to Planeswalkers. Oh, I guess never mind. They still have three more mana. Okay, never mind. The Johnny can still die. Cease your selfish acts. Ugh, gross. Definitely should not have complained the last couple of days of not having enough mana. <laughs> That's why we drew six lands. Yeah, I wanted to... But, so yeah, current control I later on. I wanted to build a mostly all colorless deck. It's not going to be great against aggro, but I played... Yeah, I built it earlier this morning, and I played two practice matches with it, and... I only got paired against Esper in the two matches, but it did well. It did really good against Esper, both matches. They didn't play Hero Precinct 1 on early in any game. Also, they didn't play it at all, actually, in any game. But So I just played against two control decks. So that's kind of what the, the Karn control is wanting to play against other control decks. Yeah, like they've been they've been missing those land drops. That light of the stage was so perfect, giving them land two and land three. Their hand was really relying on that light of the stage. And it delivered in a big way.
wait millennia for revenge. Just didn't have a good block on the Steamkin. Um, you know, even if I just if I just block the Steamkin so they don't get to add mana, they just don't have to add mana and don't have to play anything else, and they still have four creatures to my nine. Chandra had hit the land to turn on their shock also. I needed that. The ring of my sword is your death knell. I require your body. Not your soul. Well, of course, I wanted to be able to just be able to tick up on the Soren and, you know, gain a life with both of these. And, but life isn't that nice for us. Oh, yeah, I'm certainly going to be playing more Chandra Tribal. Oh, it's you burning. I really liked that deck. It was one of the most popular deck videos I've ever had also. So, yeah, definitely playing that deck again. So the problem with Legion's Landing is I don't... I should play him. I don't really think that I'm going to be able to attack too easily with Legion's Landing. With, like, the tokens. Um, but I, I still need a, a good amount of creatures for uh, the Leonin creature there. Hey, Frisky Biscuits, M20 Arcbow. Do a ban update or a new build up to you. Okay. There you go. Thank you so much, Frisky Biscuits. All right, I'll put together a new Arcbow deck with M20. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'll... Um, yeah, I'll see. Yeah, I'll try to have that, you know, like by the... Let's see, today's Friday, by the end of the weekend. Alright, come on, land. Preferably black mana. Why does it always turn to Steamkin? Just always Steamkin. All right, it was, it was not black mana. Cool. And this is another game where we can't play our bloodthirsty area lists. And it's really unfortunate for us. Hey, there we go.
I think I was going to block if they were going to attack with the Steamkin. I think I actually wanted to trade Resplendent Angel for Steamkin. I was... I was a little sad they didn't attack with it last turn. Um, so right now our deck has 16 black sources, which yeah, with Aerialist, I'd really like, I'd really prefer 17, like whenever three mana double, double color, you want 17, but 16 is not, it's not bad. We've just been getting kind of unlucky here. We haven't really been drawing our, any like, for, like our 10 duels, we haven't been seeing those very often. There's no problem. Fire can't solve. But yeah, I would prefer one more black source for aerial list. Okay, okay. Um. The problem with killing Chandra is that then my Soren dies. I don't know if that's really that much of a problem, though. So yeah, let's just go upstairs at them. So Aerialist is going to be pretty big now. Be hard for them to race. You know, hard for them to kill. Even even with them getting the extra card. This is just going to be bad for you. Yeah, I think we got this. The Aerialist is pretty sweet, though, because a flying 6-7, that's pretty big. And that's, you know, if the flying is, is really nice. You know, flying Pride Mates, the card's good. The card's good, and I'm, I'm glad we have it in here. All right, we're two and one. I wasn't super confident about either of those games against the red deck, but we ended up pulling them out. Good old Soren, giving our creatures life link. Hmm. We don't really have any payoff. We got we got a mulligan in this. So I'm going to have turn one Soulmender to make sure that I can start turning on Pride Mate. But I'm still ditching the other Soulmender because then whenever I play later on when I play Lean in Vanguard, it will trigger immediately on turn one. It, it basically, it it's kind of like it has haste uh, where the Soulmender wouldn't. I've liked the London Mulligan rule. Yeah, I've liked this. I like this Mulligan. rule here. This is looking like Nexus. Which 
which we got some good stuff in the sideboard. You know, we have a whole bunch of duresses, disparks. Those will do some work. We're not going to attack for lethal next turn, but we will the following turn. Oh, looks like they may have a bounce bell, though. Maybe. Yeah, they 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 got a bounce spell. So what am I doing against a bounce spell? I guess it's just another aerialist here. Well, I think that's game. Yeah. Just be able to play this thing. Go to combat. Triggers. Gain life triggers. Alright. The life gain deck. Beaten down Nexus. Yeah, they could have had to unsummon. That is certainly true. Yeah, certainly true there. Um, let's take out Resplendent Angel? Question mark. I'm not sure if I need all these Noxus Grass. You know, like, this is basically just kills Tamiya. You know, so it's like, do I want... Like, how many cards do I want to kill Tamiya? They could have sideboard, you know, Biogenic Ooze or whatever. We'll play two of those. Um, let's go down to one Soren. Take out Resplendent Angel. Dothakaya. All right, let's try this. No, the fountain is not better than the one-one tap for a life because the one-one, you want the creature. Um. For the other, for the other one drop that says whenever you have three creatures at the beginning of combat, you gain a life. So you you want the creature. And the creature also matters for a Johnny. It matters with like Soren can get it back if you need to for some reason. Or uh, Gideon. Uh, yeah, the, the creature just does a lot more for the deck. Good draw step there. Getting the life linker in there. On the primate. Gain a life, triggers.
They bouncing? They're not bouncing. This is a pretty sweet deck. To be honest, I like this one. It would have been nice to have to spark up here, so like they reclamation, which yeah, they're definitely doing since they had, didn't do anything else, and then we would be able to get rid of it immediately. But hmm. all right, I can't, I can't risk a bounce spell here, and then my legions landing not flipping. Oh right, they just have blast zone. So ideally, I could have played the Aerialist, attack with three creatures, the landing flips, but I couldn't really risk that. Hmm. Um, hmm. I know I noted this somewhere. Gross. So zero is exile a Johnny and each artifact and creature your opponents control. Why can't it be enchantment? Artifact, enchantment, and creature. Permanent. Exile every planeswalker. I am doing great, Gustavo. Thanks for asking. How are you doing? Yeah, Johnny takes up yeah, Johnny takes up the mythics, mythic wild cards for this deck, but probably doesn't really probably isn't used too much in other matchups. So our opponent just like no, they didn't minus. Let's just see if they just minus Tammy to grab that again. Um Do I want a minus or a plus? So we gain three, put a counter on the aerialist or Make a pride main. We probably want to make a pride main. A pure soul can inspire others. Very good chance we're dead by now. We'll see. I think you will find my notes helpful. Good. Yep, first deck of the day. Let's see over here, we're playing a Johnny's Pride. That's a very muscular cat right there. Scooped it up. The kitty cats taking down Nexus. But Nexus won that last Mythic Championship, right? All, all that people needed to beat the Nexus deck was just more cats. That's all that was necessary. More cats. Of course, that's 
that's basically true for all that's necessary for like basically any situation. More cats. That's all you need. All right. Oh no, we got a mirror match. I kind of wanted to see if I could save that Baron's, but it's probably not worth it. Ugh, could have saved it. Yeah, Haw Hawkeye's hanging out in the closet, actually. I don't know, he's... He's enjoying kind of being in there. He's taking a nap and there's like this little dark area. Look at all these dual lands we have. We're so lucky. I could try to like see if they attack into the aerialist and I get a block and stuff like that. Could try, you know, I could, could see if we could have we would have got him there, but hey, Telstar. <laughs> you know, like four or five flyers are no joke. It's like Ripjaw Raptor in the air for three mana. I guess maybe I shouldn't have attacked for as much so they didn't get to flip the Temple of Alcatraz. That may... Is it Alcatraz? Aklazots. That was close. The Temple of Aklazots. That could hurt me. They just randomly have a Kaya's Wrath here. Oh, they have that thing. Ray Day Pinball! New set means new Mardu control list. Four times, four X Chandra. It's sure to be a blast. Thanks for it, Ape Pinball. All right, when when would you like me to play the deck? What day and what slot? All right, so we're playing against other Orzov deck. Let's get our Sor extra Soren in here. So tomorrow, tomorrow, any any time. All right, I'll play it tomorrow. Cool. Sounds good. I have another Julius deck for tomorrow for first. Uh, well, I'll be playing first. So I'll play yours. Some not first, but another one of the other slots. All right. What card do I want to take out? I don't know. Kind of like all these things. I just want this extra Soren. I guess I can take out a Gideon, I suppose. I am not sure if the Othakai is going to be great or not. Like, you know, like the two creatures that we saw, one has Hexproof from white, one has Hexproof from black. So Othakai isn't hitting either one. 
Hey, Morgan. Miss you, too. Um, yeah, our Neoform Elementals deck didn't do too well yesterday. There's a few cards that felt underpowered in the deck. Let's go with a Hawk. Um, tomorrow, the deck that we're going to be playing is another teamer. We're going to be trying to teamer elemental aggro. That's the, the deck that Julius donated for tomorrow. I haven't, no, I haven't done a Scape Shift combo deck yet. Yeah, I haven't done one of those yet. So ideally, I'll play this Scour Barons. Okay, not gonna happen. I was gonna say, ideally, I'd be able to play it after the Aerialist. But now we'll have to play it before the Aerialist. Yeah, Elementals definitely have competitive potential, absolutely. Um, Risen Reef is an incredibly good card. I'm not super sold on Teamer still for Elementals and being like aggro with the Elementals, but definitely Risen Reef and Cavalier of Thorns and uh, Big Mana um, Elementals, absolutely there. All right, well, that was not ideal. The old three for one. The three mana three for one. Not ideal. Ooh, let's see card. So they got the Wall of First Strikes here. They have nine power of First Strike, so this thing's got to be at least bigger than a 9-9 before I could even attack with it. Until we achieve peace, we must fight for a better tomorrow. All right, we are four and one. All right. Our cat deck is 4-1, and one, and we are facing the final boss. A Johnny Strength of the Pride. Looking pretty good here, I'd have to say. Yeah, pretty solid here. Couple one landers back to back means we're going down to five. All right, we'll try this five. We'll get rid of two of the Ajani's. Dual land, dual land. Like isolated chapel. Dang. Right row. I've been playing against a whole lot of these blue green ramp decks here this league. Or like, you know, blue green try to get a lot of mana. This are you know, I'm including Nexus with the ramp stuff there. This is our fourth one. This league. Those decks are very good. And so the fact that we are doing this well against them. Pretty happy with that. Together, hey, we yeah. Will yeah, I've had that, that question there with the, the tappers. We want creatures. There's a lot of a lot of good synergy with cre having creatures. 
to be able to gain life with, especially like Lean and Vanguard in particular. Blair Hand looks to be pretty good. Turn 3 Krasis, turn 4 Nissa. Help with the Growth Spiral. And now turn 5, they have infinite mana and 5 cards in hand. The land shall conquer you. Yep, turn 5, take all our stuff. Alright, so if they have mass manipulation, we lose. If they don't, we have a shot. That's how these matchups have been going. Alright, bring in our sideboard. Still with two to spark. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I could definitely see Gideon being better than Othakaya. I think that it's between those cards there. I could have gone the coward's way out and just taken out one of each and still had one of each. Ugh. Remember last game I asked for isolated chapel and they're like, here you go, here's here's all your isolated chapels. But the good news is they had like their really awesome, amazing hand against my crappy mold of five where we didn't draw a third land. So, you know, if if our opponent's going to have like one of the three hands be awesome, we picked a good time for them to have that awesome hand. Palaka Worm? Doing a good job of drawing our top end. Yeah, that would be really nice, fanatical, fanatic group, uh, guru. Um, having the records for the decks all together somewhere. Good old auto tap. All right, please draw a land deck. Please draw land. Please draw land. Yay. All right, so that thing's going to be a 3-5. Let's go Soren first. I will have revenge for House Marco. Because the lifelink for our creatures Vampire definitely cannot attack with the pride mate. Because again, that druid's a 3 5. But we'll get to gain life twice here. Get two triggers. So, Palaka Worm's online. Really big Krasis online. <laughs> I 
Yeah, this is like our first time playing Gates. We just had like all of our basics in like all the other games. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. We were playing a Johnny in our vampire deck, and now we got Soren in our uh, cat deck. <laughs> um, all right, so we'll go with this with the tick up. I am a Johnny Goldman. I sense the good in your heart. And then this with the tick up. The weak. So they have to block, right? Or no? They yeah, they have to block. We'll just trade Krasis for Pride Mate. It's not even like the best trade for me. But if they do that trade, they may just, yeah, if they do that trade, we have both of our Planeswalkers still. And maybe they're dead to this area list. Yeah, I mean, we just have to dodge mass manipulation, basically. We already dressed one away. We have to dodge dodge that card. That's kind of always our thing, though. We always got to dodge mass manipulation. Seriously? Come on. Boo. Yeah, we would have been able to do the zero and exile all their stuff. We had enough life. We could have... Exiled all their their things. Like so, if they would have just played a bunch of stuff, it yeah, would have exiled it all. Mass manipulation is so rude. That's kind of that's kind of that matchup though. Is just do we dodge manipulation? You know, like we we won that matchup earlier when we were able to dodge manipulation, and then as you see, like those next two, the two matches we lost against it, because those were both of our losses. Was that matchup right? I think that was our first loss. Also, I remember losing at least one game to manipulation, and I think that was our loss. Um. But <laughs> yeah, besides besides getting mass manipulated, this deck was a really cool. Um, and yeah, one two against the the big ramp deck there. But we did beat Nexus, beat Mono Red. Um, a pretty cool little deck. This a Johnny Strength of the Pride card felt really powerful. Honestly, I was very impressed with this card. You know, making a Johnny's Pride Mates was good. The plus one gained us a bunch of life when, like, whenever we had different, whenever we had like Pride Mate Aerialist, that was very nice. Um, and then we we didn't get to really ever do the zero ability because we were just killing people before that. But like that last game would have been a time where we would have been able to do the zero ability. Um, so. Uh, yeah, this deck felt pretty sweet. Um, one thing about it, I mean, we did have like some mana troubles, of course, which I think was just more of like a, a variance thing than like our mana base being bad. I think our mana base is pretty pretty okay, pretty good. Um, we could maybe use like one more dual land in here. Um, but yeah, Soul Mender, Soul Mender was was good. You know, like we just need to have like we need to be able to gain life with these cards like over and over like every turn. So yeah, the Soul Mender was pretty good. The Legion's Landings wasn't super impressed with because we're not we're not really attack. You know, it's hard to actually attack with a bunch of things on the ground. Um, but like the Lean and Vanguard and the Soul Mender both gain life without having to attack, and this gains life attacking in the air. So I definitely liked these more than the Legion's Landing, for example. Uh, but yeah, Pride Mate, Resplendent, Aerialist, all these are very good. I'm not sold on the Gideons yet. I'm not quite sold there yet. Um, but pretty sweet little deck. Like maybe maybe between these Legions Landings and Gideons, like may maybe those five cards could be reallocated for other things potentially. I, I don't know exactly what. I don't really have great suggestions there. But you know maybe other 
other like one and two two drops like especially like the gideons maybe, maybe we need like more two mana cards or something with this curve um i wouldn't mind a 24th land so like if you do want another land we could probably have another barons barons was pretty good because you know you gain that life that's that's our, i i do like the barons here so we were stuck on lands quite a bit maybe a 24th land wouldn't be so bad But a pretty nice deck. And then, yeah, the other thing... Oh, yeah, we talked about uh, talked about like Midnight Reapers in the sideboard. We didn't really play matchups where Midnight Reaper would be really good. You know, like, against those big mana decks, it's just do they mass manipulate you or not. It wasn't really things dying too much. But if you're playing against removal-heavy decks, um, Midnight Reaper could be good there. Uh, we probably have too much Planeswalker removal, kind of in general, with three Noxious Crafts, three to Spark, and an Elder Spell probably don't need all of that um it's like one of those can can go probably like maybe the elder spell like that's that's the spot where you can get a midnight reaper in hey no need to try thank you so much for that sub there i appreciate that yeah but this is a very cool deck though um definitely liked this one I'm going to put this down on my favorites playlist. This was a, a pretty sweet deck here. Um, yeah, I'd have to say the Pride Bait and the Aerialist were, were stronger than anticipated. All right, uh, if you're watching this video later on YouTube, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. I'd appreciate that. But thank you so much for watching Johnny's Pride, and I will see you for another video.